Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AIS Academy. Displayed are the list of news articles taken for today's analysis and their page numbers in different editions of the newspaper. The link for the handwritten notes and the timestamping of the news articles are provided in the description section. And for the benefit of smartphone users, the timestamping is also given in the comment section. Now let us move on to the analysis of first news article. This news article states that the discussions to finalize the Naga Accord or the Naga Agreement is continuing. See this Naga Accord is nothing but the Naga Peace Deal or the Naga Peace Accord. This peace deal is expected to be a solution to the Naga political problem. It was expected that this peace deal would be concluded yesterday as announced by the government. Know that it is not yet concluded. So before discussing the news article, let's first understand the background behind this peace deal. Why is it needed even though Nagaland is a state under the Indian Union? And what is this Naga political problem? See this political problem of Nagas started way back in 1918. In 1918, the Naga club was formed. The objective was to assist the British colonial administration. But later, this Naga club played a very important role in searching for a common Naga identity. Know that this Naga club started the Naga movement. Under the movement, they claimed a distinct or a specific ethnic identity for Nagas and they demanded an independent homeland for the Nagas. When we say Nagas, we are referring to the inhabitants and certain tribal populations living in Naga Hills, which is along the northeast frontier in the border between Assam and present day Burma. Frontier refers to the border separating two countries here. Simply, it's a border. In 1929, this Naga club submitted a memorandum to the Simon Commission. The club emphasized that the Nagas and the Indians do not have any common history. That is, they both of them are separate with no common history and therefore Naga should be given independent status. Then in 1946, Naga club was renamed and reorganized as Naga National Council, shortly called as NNC. One person who played a very important role in reorganization of this club was A. Z. Fizo. In June 1947, a nine-point agreement was signed between Naga National Council and the then Governor of Assam, Sir Akbar Haidari. This agreement recognized the right of Nagas to develop themselves according to their freely elected wishes. But there was one point or a clause that created disagreements and divisions. This is clause 9 of this agreement because it stated that after a period of 10 years, the Naga National Council will be asked whether the agreement shall be extended or a new agreement shall be arrived at. But this clause was interpreted differently. The Naga National Council interpreted this as an attainment of sovereignty by the Nagas. That means Nagas do have the right to out of the Indian Union after 10 years. But Government of India interpreted it as signing a new arrangement or a new agreement within the Indian Union. According to some history sources, they are saying that this agreement was seen as a dead letter by Indians. Here when we say dead letter, it means the agreement was not functional or defunct in practice. So because of this, on August 14, 1947, Mr. Fizo, along with eight other Naga leaders, declared independence for Nagas. But according to historians, this Naga independence was ignored by the outside world. Then from 1948, the administration of Naga areas began to change. Indians took over the administration and they also took over the posts which were held by Nagas in the past. In January 1950, independence was again declared by the Nagas after they conducted their own plebiscite. When we say plebiscite, it simply means direct vote of all the members of uh, a particular electorate on a very important question of public importance. In our context, this question was whether independence is needed for Nagas or not. But know that this plebiscite showed almost unanimous vote in favor of independence for Nagas. 
but this was not recognized by government of india and rather indian government gave the naga hills a status to be a part of tribal areas of assam what happened after this was nagas launched a campaign of civil disobedience in the same line of civil disobedience movement that was uh, used to achieve indian independence as a part of this civil disobedience nagas withdraw from schools and administration and they refused to pay taxes to government of india and they also declared the formation of an independent government and also declared launching of violent insurrection insurrection means a violent uprising against the government simply a strong insurgency movement and it is also called as secessionist movement because they want to secede from indian government by declaring independence because of the launch of violent insurrection the leaders of naga national council were arrested and 16 tribal councils under the control of this council were abolished in this scenario the government of india followed two track policy on one hand government of india made it clear that it would firmly oppose the secessionist or separatist demand of naga areas for independence and it will not tolerate violence so when a section of nagas organized armed struggle at that time government of india retaliated by sending indian army to nagaland in early 1956 this move was called by the government to restore peace law and order in the area on the other hand the government realized that military action will not result in winning the hearts of people of nagas so a friendly approach was carried out by then prime minister mr jawaharlal nehru now with respect to integration of people of naga with the idea of india historians provide the same status as they gave to sardar vallabhbhai patel with respect to integrating the princely states into indian union to jawaharlal nehru with respect to integrating the hearts of naga people with indian union nehru favored to maintain the naga autonomy in culture and other matters this was to be done by giving them a large degree of autonomy on certain matters so the then prime minister prime minister nehru carried out negotiations with certain naga leaders who were moderate non violent or non separatist know that nehru did not negotiate with fizo or his supporters because they took arms or they carried out armed rebellion so because of this some moderate leaders you know headed by dr imkong liba o came to the front and they negotiated for the creation of nagaland state within the indian union and therefore the state of nagaland came into existence in the year 1963 but that was not an end to the naga movement because majority of naga inhabited areas were left outside the new state So in 1964 the government of India formed a three man peace commission or a Nagaland peace commission this commission signed a ceasefire agreement with Mr Fizo here ceasefire means a temporary suspension of fighting in other words it also means agreeing for a truce even after the ceasefire several efforts to bring a permanent settlement to this political problem has failed because the two sides could not agree on a formula for settlement Then in 1975 Shillong Accord was signed in which Naga National Council agreed to give up arms and to accept Indian constitution but here two NNC members revolted against this move they are Sri Isaac Chishiswu and Sri TH Moiva they termed Shillong Accord as a sell out or a betrayal on the Naga sovereignty demand so they themselves along with their supporters they formed national socialist council of nagaland that is nscn in the year 1980 with another leader ss kaplang however this nscn split in 1988 because of leadership differences into nscn im and nscn k k for kaplang i for isaac and m for moiva however after this the isaac moiva faction emerged as the major insurgent group they succeeded in integrating rival naga ethnic groups they were able to integrate them by holding several uh, people's consultative groups meetings across naga inhabited areas they demanded nagalim which means greater nagaland so now this means integration of naga inhabited areas in the state of assam arunachal and manipur with nagaland so to attain a solution the government of india and national socialist council of nagaland concluded dialogues on naga political issue 
in August 2015 by signing an agreement. This agreement is called as a framework agreement. This is known as Naga Peace Accord. And whatever that is to be signed hereafter is a continuation of this Naga Peace Accord only. So the August 2015 accord was signed by government's interlocutor for Naga Peace Talks, Sri R N Ravi, on behalf of N S C N. The agreement was signed by Isaac Chishiswu and Moiva. This August 2015 agreement was expected to end the oldest insurgency in the country. Now the term. the oldest insurgency is the expression given by the government of india that agreement was aimed to provide a life of dignity life of opportunity and equity for the naga people this was to be done in consistent with the uniqueness of naga people and their culture and traditions but know that the agreement did not come into force because of unrealistic demands of nscn im faction or in other words simply called as nscn They issued statements by claiming that they wanted a separate constitution, a separate flag, and also integration of all contiguous Naga inhabited areas under Naga Lim or the Greater Naga Land. See, if Naga Lim has to be established, then it means the Naga inhabited areas in the states of Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and Manipur has to be integrated. So this will lead to territorial disintegration or division in these three states. and know that these states are opposing such territorial divisions and it is not yet clear whether such a division will be carried out or not but there are some speculations that the center and nscn has reached an agreement that there will be some redrawing of boundaries of the states with a sizable naga population today's news article notes that the national socialist council of nagaland is demanding naga lim or greater nagaland by saying that it wants to unite 1.2 million nagas that is around 12 lakh naga population but the news article also states that the center has ruled out disintegration of the neighboring states the statement is based on a clarification by ministry of home affairs the clarification mentioned that before any settlement is arrived with the naga groups all stakeholders including the states of assam manipur and arunachal pradesh will be duly consulted and their concerns will be taken into consideration And today's news article also states that the discussions to attain a solution is still going on or still continuing and the naga interlocutor R N Ravi has said that NSCN IM had come on board with the government interlocutor means one who is consistently involved in the negotiations between government of india and this NSCN faction in this context he also noted that there would be no separate flag or separate constitution for nagas as demanded by NSCN and know that mr r n ravi is the governor of nagaland now the news article also notes that it is not clear if the accord would be signed before november 2 this is because our prime minister is leaving for thailand to attend the 16th asean india summit 14th east asia summit and the third rcep summit so it is uh, rarely expected that the accord will be signed today and mostly expected that it will be the process will begin once our prime minister comes back to india so these are some of the information with respect to the analysis of this news article kindly bear with us when we discuss some articles in detail particularly we may talk uh, the background of the articles and this may lead to increase in the video length on certain days and this point and this topic is also important from the mains perspective as we have linked the syllabus particularly under uh, gs1 in post independent consolidation and reorganization of states and also with reference to extremism and internal security challenges in gs3 now let us move on to the analysis of next news article these news articles are with reference to the recent snooping incidents wherein uh, members of civil society across the world were kept under surveillance allegedly by using the technical inputs and support from a israeli technological firm the syllabus relevant for the analysis of uh, these news articles have been highlighted here for your reference when we say snooping it refers to encroaching or invading the privacy of another person or getting unauthorized access to the private matters of other individual the news article mentions that by using a spyware named as pegasus the snooping incidents were carried out now some of the stakeholders of civil society who were affected are journalists lawyers or attorneys 
and persons who are working for the protection of rights of persons belonging to the scheduled castes and also the human rights defenders so what is a spyware see spyware is one of a malware it is a malware a malware is nothing but a malicious software this malware is simply a program or a file that is designed to disrupt to damage and to gain unauthorized access to a computer system or a smartphone for that matter spyware is one such malicious software which will snoop into the private life of persons by using inbuilt camera in a smartphone or a laptop or by using voice recorder in smartphone or laptop and by using similar technical features in a computer or smartphone and as the name suggests it is a malicious software that gets installed on a device without the consent of the user or without the knowledge of the user once installed it gathers information from the system and sends such information to its required entity without the consent of the user or without the knowledge of the user spyware attacks is also one of the prevalent forms of cyber attack and according to the statement made by whatsapp in its complaint filed in a court in united states pegasus spyware was developed by an israeli technology firm called as nso group this spyware exploited a vulnerability in whatsapp's video call feature this vulnerability in whatsapp allowed cyber attackers to inject pegasus onto the phones simply by making a call to the target device even though the call is not answered pegasus will infect the target device once pegasus is installed it can access the user's private data including passwords contact lists calendar events text messages live voice calls including you know from other applications such as facebook or telegram etc and it can also on its own operate the microphone or voice recorder in the mobile phone or the infected system to spy on the various activities of the users the news article mentions that the alleged group called as nso group the group in itself claims that its products are used exclusively by government intelligence and law enforcement agencies for the purpose of fighting crime and terror when such a firm says its spywares or its products are used only by government intelligence and law enforcement agencies this leads to a question which government intelligence agency has snooped into the members of civil society in indian country and the central government has denied any role in the snooping incident of the members of civil society and in fact the center has sought an explanation from whatsapp regarding the nature of the breach that has happened and the safeguards that are provided by whatsapp to protect the privacy of millions of indian users and the government has also said that it was committed to protecting the fundamental rights of citizens and we know that even right to privacy is a implied fundamental right under article 21 of indian constitution government officials have said that they would take strict action against any intermediary who's responsible for breach of privacy of citizens we are talking about the government that has drafted the information technology intermediaries guidelines amendment rules 2018 which we have discussed in detail on 24th october the hindu news analysis the central government asks the intermediaries be it telecom intermediary or uh, social media intermediary to decrypt the end to end encrypt messages to the government whenever needed under certain circumstances the draft rules enacted by the central government states that any information that violates any laws in force shall not be displayed uploaded shared or transmitted by the users of the intermediary okay anyhow by january 2020 we can expect these draft rules and other set of rules to govern the social media intermediaries now the officials after these snooping incidents have stated that government agencies have a well established protocol for interception when we say protocol there is a procedure that includes permission that is sanction 
and supervision from highly ranked officials in central and state governments for a number of situations for example in the national interest now let us see few components of these protocols that are followed by the center and the states these protocol are based on the sections and rules given in the indian telegraph act of 1885 and the indian telegraph amendment rules of 2007 section 5 of uh, the indian telegraph act speaks about the power of government to order interception of messages so according to this section in the event of any public emergency or in the interest of public safety or in the interest of sovereignty and integrity of india or for the security of the state or for friendly nations with foreign states or public order or for preventing incitement to the commission of an offence here if you take public order it is subject to different interpretations and the reasons to intercept has to be given in writing see for these reasons the central government or a state government or any officer specially authorized for this purpose by central or state government they may direct interception or blocking of any message that is received by any telegraph and all these messages shall be disclosed to the government and the direction also includes from such a telegraph certain messages shall not be transmitted also here when we say telegraph we should know that it means any appliance or instrument or material or apparatus that is used or capable for transmission or reception of signs signals right writing images or sounds or intelligence by way of visual or other electromagnetic emissions radio waves and etc so by the simple definition of telegraph it obviously includes computers and mobile phones whenever we read section 5 of uh, indian telegraph act we have to read along with section 419 capital a of indian telegraph rules 1951 which was amended by the indian telegraph amendment rules of 2007 it says that the direction for interception under section 5 may normally be issued only by union home secretary at the center or a state home secretary at the level of state governments by the union home secretary or a state home secretary however in unavoidable circumstances a lawful order can be issued by an officer not below the rank of a joint secretary to the government of india who has been authorized by the union or state home secretary for appropriate purposes here unavoidable circumstances could refer to situations where in remote areas where obtaining prior directions for interception of messages is not feasible right now let us also discuss few provisions given under it act of 2000 that is information technology act of 2000 let's discuss section 69 of this act it empowers the central government and the state governments to issue directions for monitoring interception decryption of any information that is transmitted or received or stored through a computer again this is also for the interest of sovereignty and or integrity of india security of state friendly relations with foreign states or public order or for preventing incitement to the commission of any cognizable offence with reasons that are to be recorded in writing and if a person in charge of a computer resource fails to assist the investigating agency or authorized agency the person shall be punished with an imprisonment that may extend to 7 years now section 69 of it act has to be read along with the provisions given under it rules 2009 these are rules with respect to the procedure and safeguards for interception monitoring and decryption of information here rule 4 states that competent authority who is union home secretary or state home secretary this authority may authorize an agency of the government to intercept or monitor or decrypt information for the purposes specified under section 69 of the act these are the purposes that we have seen just now for example defense of india or security of the state so this it rules 2009 it deals with provision such as who may issue directions of interception and monitoring how such directions are to be executed how much time how long they can remain in operation and to whom the data may be disclosed and various confidential 
various confidentiality obligations of intermediaries and oversight or supervision of interception and its directions interception and interception directions which shall be carried out by review committee and other things and in this context we should also know about an important notification issued by union home ministry in december 2018 this order authorized 10 security and intelligence agencies to intercept monitor and decrypt any information that is generated transmitted received or stored in any computer resource these agencies are intelligence bureau narcotics control bureau enforcement directorate central board of direct taxes directorate of revenue intelligence central bureau of investigation nia that is national investigation agency cabinet secretariat raw division research and analysis wing directorate of signal intelligence for service areas of jammu and kashmir northeast and assam and more importantly the commissioner of police delhi so when you read the term protocol in the news article they are referring to these procedures that we have just now discussed so the recent breach in privacy using pegasus spyware shows the vulnerability of social media platforms and social media intermediaries for example whatsapp and uh, tragic among this is that uh, the targets of these spyware's are members of civil society such as human rights defenders journalists and people who are working for the protection of oppressed sections and all these people are uh, sacrificing their lives for making this world a better place to live we should also see this event as not just violation of right to privacy of individuals but this is also a grave threat to democratic values because most of the targets are known for showing dissent or dissident or disagreement to the government policies so that means these are actions that aim to suppress the voices of disagreement or even constructive criticism so while it is very important for the civil society to remain safe it is also the duty of the government to ensure adequate safeguards to protect the privacy of our citizens and also it is the duty of social media intermediaries to make their networks and systems full proof and without any vulnerability for intrusions now the second article with focus on maharashtra is because of an opinion that many human rights offenders do belong to maharashtra who are affected by the snooping incidents using pegasus however the home department of the state government has said that it is not aware of any such activity involving uh, private or government organizations with respect to snooping the article mentions that the process of phone tapping is carried out using a well laid protocol and even if the state government has to intercept information it has to be based on the provisions that we have discussed with respect to the telegraph act and the telegraph rules anyhow in the days to come we will get to know which government agency or which entity has spied on the members of civil society all over the world provided the complaint filed by whatsapp in us court makes remarkable progress these are some of the information with respect to the analysis of these two news articles now let us move on to next article this news article is about creative cities network of unesco the syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article has been highlighted here for your reference first let's have a brief look about creative cities network of unesco and then we will proceed to the news article so what is this creative cities network it is an initiative that was created by unesco in the first decade of 21st century that is in 2004 the main aim for creating this network is to promote cooperation among cities that have identified creativity as a main factor for sustainable urban development that is why it is called as creative cities network this network will act as a ground of action and innovation especially for the implementation of 2030 agenda for sustainable development here under sdg goals we have a specific goal with respect to cities that is goal number 11 which is to make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable by the year 2030 So as on 31st October 2019 as per UNESCO there are 246 cities in this creative cities network 
all these cities work together for a common objective at local level and at international level at local level the objective is to place or to have creativity and cultural industries at the heart of urban development plans and at the international level these cities with cooperate actively to achieve the same objective in the local level so by joining the network the cities will share their best practices and they will develop partnerships that will involve public and private sectors and also the civil society to carry out certain actions now these are actions to strengthen creation production distribution and dissemination of cultural activities cultural goods and services and these actions also include developing hubs of creativity and innovation and broadening opportunities for creators and professionals in the cultural sector then to improve access to cultural life and improving the participation in cultural life particularly for marginalized or vulnerable groups and individuals and one more important action is to fully integrate culture and creativity in the sustainable development plans this network covers seven creative fields one is crafts and folk arts then media arts then film design gastronomy literature and music here gastronomy refers to the practice or the art of choosing cooking and eating good food know that every year world cities day is celebrated on 31st of october this observation has started since 2014 based on a resolution passed by united nations general assembly in december 2013 The general theme of World Cities Day every year is better city better life. However, sub theme under this general theme will vary every year to promote successes of urbanization or to address specific challenges resulting from urbanization. This year's sub theme is changing the world innovations and better life for future generations. Now let us see the news articles on the occasion of World Cities Day on 31st October. It is announced that Hyderabad is selected as UNESCO Creative City in Gastronomy category. So from now on Hyderabad is a city of gastronomy. It is one among the 66 cities that have been designated uh, as creative cities this year. Know that in India Mumbai is also one among these 66 cities. Mumbai is designated as creative city in the film category. Apart from these two cities there are already 3 Indian cities which are part of this creative cities network they are Chennai Varanasi and Jaipur Chennai and Varanasi represent the music category or city of music whereas Jaipur represents crafts and folk arts category so totally 5 Indian cities are part of this creative cities network earlier there were around 180 cities in this network with the addition of 66 more cities in this year as of now there are 246 cities at the world level which are part of this network the news article mentions that hyderabad city received this unesco recognition because of the incredible range of food it have it says hyderabad as a city of biryanis kebabs halim kallu shikampur and chowki dinners and the delegation which represented hyderabad city to unesco states that pre islamic kakatiya cuisines of 12th century have interacted in a incredible fashion with the arrival of turks in the 15th century followed by mughal influences in the 7th century the news article mentions that food is an integral part of culture in hyderabad until 1940 there were no restaurants however now there are around 1 lakh food carts that have been mapped in hyderabad news article also states that the food culture has been preserved in homes and royal kitchens earlier so in the analysis of this news article we saw about the unesco initiative of creative cities network and five cities from india which are part of this network with the special reference to hyderabad the city of gastronomy in india now let us move on to the analysis of next news article this news article states that beijing illegally holds parts of indian territory the syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article has been highlighted here for your reference the news article reports the reactions from chinese side in response to the reorganization of the erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir we know that as per the reorganization act of jnk 2019 that is the jnk reorganization act 
2019. The erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir was bifurcated into two union territories, one union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, then union territory of Ladakh. This bifurcation has come into effect yesterday, that is on 31st October 2019, on the occasion of Rashtriya Ekta Divas, which in English is the National Unity Day. See, this National Unity Day is celebrated in the honor of the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. China has stated the reorganization of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh as void. That means it is not valid or not legally binding. And Chinese spokesperson highlights that the Ladakh region contains Chinese territories and urge India to respect Chinese sovereignty and territorial integrity. See, here the Chinese official is referring to the Akshay Chin region of Union Territory of Ladakh and Shakskam Valley of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. And they are claiming these territories as Chinese sovereign territories. You can see these territories in the diagram. Here, the borderline, which is on the outer side, which is claimed by India to be the border between India and China, is also called as Johnson's Line. And the present border between India and China, which is claimed by Chinese side, is called as line of actual control or also called as McDonald's line. And note that the border of uh, Arunachal Pradesh with China in the eastern side is called as McMohan line. You should note that Akshay Chin, Shakskam Valley, both these territories are part of erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that joined with Union of India in 26-27 October 1947. Therefore, both these territories in Jammu and Kashmir are under illegal occupation and illegal administration of China and therefore these territories are sovereign territories of Republic of India. That is why the article mentions that the Ministry of External Affairs of India has argued that China is in illegal possession of parts that are parts of erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. The ministry has also warned other countries including China to respect India's internal matters and sovereignty and other countries should not comment on the internal matters of India just as India refrains from commenting on the internal issues of other countries. Now let us see how China got these two territories. See in 1962 China unilaterally invaded the territory of Jammu and Kashmir and captured Akshay Chin. See, Akshay Chin at that time formed 20% of then Jammu and Kashmir. Capturing Akshay Chin gave a big foothold in Jammu and Kashmir. And because of the geographical significance and because of the altitude of Akshay Chin, it is also said that at present, the Akshay Chin area acts as a watchtower for China for the entire region of Central Asia. Now, the reasons for the 1962 Sino-Indian War are mainly territorial disputes between the two nations and also India's uh, support for independent Tibet at times and also India's support for Tibetan leader Dalai Lama. See, these are the main reasons. The war actually ended with the retreat of Chinese forces just to the line of actual control, which is the McDonald's line. And India has failed to reclaim the area which was occupied by the China during the war. That is the Akshay Chin area. Now let us see how China got this Shakskam Valley. See, Pakistan has illegally invaded Indian region in 1947, immediately in the next few months of Indian independence. And they occupied Indian territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which is presently under illegal occupation of Pakistan. And therefore, it is called as Pakistan Occupied Kashmir. And in 1963, there was an illegal agreement with China from the side of Pakistan. That is Sino-Pak Agreement of 1963. And by this agreement, this Shakskam Valley is ceded to China. Since then, China is illegally administering the Shakskam Valley region. See, this region is geographically around some 5,000 square kilometer. So these are some of the information with respect to the analysis of uh, this news article. Now let us move on to the analysis of next news article. This news article is based on recently published National Health Profile 2019. The syllabus relevant for the analysis has been highlighted here for your reference. See this National Health Profile is the 14th edition of NHP. It is the annual publication of Central Bureau of Health Intelligence which is under Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. This National Health Profile provides comprehensive information related to health sector. 
it gives vital information on all major health sector related indicators socio economic indicators demographic indicators health status health finance health infrastructure and human resources required for health sector all these parameters and indicators are covered see such a profile is important because an updated and reliable health database is the foundation of decision making across all sectors of health system and such profile such updated information is essential for development and implementation of policies in health sectors then matters pertaining to governance and regulation in health sector health resource human resource development health education and training health service delivery and also fund allocation and financing the health sector now let us look into some of the important findings of this profile with respect to the news article one is sex ratio see sex ratio describes the number of females per 1000 of males in 1991 it was 926 females against 1000 males and since 1991 there has been increase from 926 to 933 in 2001 then 943 in 2011 between 2001 and 2011 sex ratio has increased from 946 to 949 in rural areas and in the same period in urban areas the improvement has been to the tune of 29 points from 900 to 929 here we can know that sex ratio in rural areas in india is much better than that of urban areas these information are based on nhp 2019 now let us see the facts with respect to sex ratio in terms of states and union territories see kerala has recorded the highest sex ratio of 1084 among the rural population in kerala it is 1078 and urban population it is 1091 this is followed by puducherry where it is 1037 for all other uh, states and union territories it is less than 1000 only the lowest sex ratio was reported by the union territory of daman and dayu to the tune of around 618 females for 1000 males this is followed by chandigarh where it is 818 and nct delhi 868 andaman and nicobar islands 876 Haryana 879, JNK 889, Sikkim 890, Punjab 895. Now these numbers are not that significant, but what you have to keep in mind is note these union territories and states. These are less than 900 for 1000 males. Now let us analyze the data with respect to birth rate and death rate, and also natural growth rate. See, birth rate is the number of live births per 1000 persons in a year. Similarly death rate is number of deaths per 1000 persons in a year see if the birth rate is higher than the death rate obviously population in a country increases and when we say natural growth rate it is nothing but the difference between birth rate and death rate and this uh, national health profile states that estimated birth rate declined from 25.8 in 2000 to 20.4 in 2016 during the same period that is from 2000 to 2016 death rate also declined from 8.5 to 6.4 per 1000 persons so the trend is that since 2000 there is decline in both rates also the natural growth rate declined from 17.3 in 2000 to 14 in 2016 here 14 is nothing but 20.4 minus 6.4 20.4 is the birth rate in 2016 6.4 is the death rate in 2016 so all the three rates are declining now let us analyze the findings with respect to total fertility rate the total fertility rate is the average number of children who will be born to a woman during her lifetime this is the definition given by nhp 2019 the tfr for the country was 2.3 during 2016 in rural areas it was uh, 2.5 in urban it was 1.8 so when we analyze these information mostly the trends are important and important values you have to keep in you may use an introduction or conclusion in the mains answer writing or in the essay writing now with respect to total fertility rate we also hear about replacement level fertility rate see a total fertility rate of 2.1 children per woman is called as replacement level fertility it is the level of fertility at which a population exactly replaces the previous generation in other words it is the level of fertility at which a population exactly replaces itself from one generation to the next in bihar the total fertility rate is 3.3 in up it is 3.1 
and for lowest total fertility rate we can say delhi tamil nadu and west bengal all of them have 1.6 now let's come to the literacy rate so who is a literate who can be treated as literate see as per census a person aged 7 and above who can both read and write with understanding in any language is treated as literate now as per nhp the literacy rate of the country has increased to the tune of 8.2% during the decade 2001 to 2011 and overall literacy rate of india is 73% for males it is 80.9% for females it is 64.6% rural literacy rate is 67.8% urban literacy rate is 84.1% so here we can say that men and urban population are having better access to education or are better in terms of literacy rate over women or females and rural population the leaders with respect to literacy rate are kerala with 94% then mizoram with 91.3% least performers with respect to literacy rate are bihar with 61.8% then arunachal pradesh 65.4% then rajasthan at 66.1% note that the values given by nhp is not overlapping exactly with the values given by the census 2011 according to census 2011 the literacy rate has improved by 9.21 percentage points during 2001 to 2011 so there is discrepancy in reporting of data and there may be certain reasons for such discrepancies one of the reason could be the methodology adopted by nhp 2019 now using this nhp 2019 we can also say that non communicable diseases dominate over the communicable diseases in the total disease burden of the country and one important fact is that this nhp has also compiled a detailed data on health manpower availability in public sector there are around 11.5 lakh allopathic registered doctors in india and registered aish doctors as on january 1 2018 was around 8 lakh when we say aish doctors this include ayurveda naturopathy and yoga unani siddha and homeopathy one important fact is that more than 55% of aish doctors are from a single branch which is ayurveda so these are some of the information that we can take from the analysis of this news article we saw about uh, what is nhp what is nhp 2019 who publishes it then we analyzed factors with respect to sex ratio birth rate death rate natural growth rate total fertility rate literacy rate and also we saw that non communicable diseases dominate over communicable diseases then we saw few data about health manpower availability in public sector we have come to the last session the practice questions discussion session we are happy to bring back our earlier format of practice questions discussion so as to satisfy the preparation requirement of our viewers now let's go to the first question this question is with reference to creative cities network initiative of unesco we know that hyderabad was recently included in this network they have given five cities and are asking which of the following cities in india is or are part of unesco's creative cities network in music category first let's see whether is there any possibility to eliminate and arrive at the correct answer see we know that hyderabad was included in this network as a city of gastronomy or under gastronomy category so hyderabad should not come under music category so any options should not have the number 3 so thereby you can eliminate option a option b and option d so the correct answer for this question is option c 1 and 5 only now see creative cities network was created by unesco in 2004 the aim is to promote cooperation among the cities who identified creativity as a strategic factor for sustainable urban development for implementing the agenda of sustainable development 2030 we know that goal number 11 deals with making cities inclusive safe resilient and sustainable by 2030 this network covers seven creative fields in question we, there is given music category we discussed about gastronomy category and there are crafts and folk arts category media arts category film category design category and literature category five indian cities are part of this network under four categories jaipur city under crafts and folk arts category mumbai under film category hyderabad under gastronomy category 
Chennai and Varanasi under music category. So the correct answer for this question is option C, 1 and 5 only. That is Varanasi and Chennai are part of UNESCO's Creative Cities Network in music category. Now let us move on to next question. This question is with reference to Pegasus. What is Pegasus that is often mentioned in the news? It is the rover developed by NASA for its upcoming manned space mission. No, it is not. It is the new air-to-surface anti-radiation missile developed by India. See, this missile is called as New Generation Anti-Radiation Missile, NGARM. Third option, it is a spyware that was installed in smartphones by exploiting a vulnerability in WhatsApp application. Now, this answer is correct. And it is alleged by WhatsApp that this spyware was developed by an Israeli technological firm called as NSO Group. Using this spyware, the mobile phones and systems of uh, several members of civil society in India and abroad were hacked and were under surveillance. This spyware has actually exploited the WhatsApp video call feature to enter into the smartphones. So the correct answer here is option C. See the last option. It says it is the rover developed by ISRO for its Mars Orbiter Mission 2. Now this statement in itself is wrong and with respect to Chandrayaan 2, moon mission of India, of ISRO, name of the rover was Pragyan and the name of the lander was Vikram. In 2018, if you see there was a question on Internet of Things. So we can expect questions in these lines. Now let us move on to next question. In this question, they have given regions on one side and the names of union territories on the other hand. They are asking that which of the above given pairs is or are incorrectly matched. We can expect such uh, geography based questions. See this question is based on the locations that we frequently see in the news article. Note that Shakskam Valley is part of union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Akshay Chin is part of Union Territory of Ladakh and Shiachin region including the strategic Kumar post is part of Union Territory of Ladakh. Also Nubra Valley, Nubra River which is a tributary of Shiok River is also located in Union Territory of Ladakh. So we have discussed Nubra Valley and Shiok River during our Hindu news analysis on 22nd October 2019. So in this question if you see all the pairs are correctly matched but note that questions asks for incorrectly matched pairs none of the pairs are incorrectly matched correct answer is option b now this is a practice question that is based on geography they have given four states and are asking to arrange them geographically from south to north we know that arunachal pradesh is in the north so one should come on the right hand side to correspond to north so that means we can eliminate option A and D. If you see options B and C, now confusion is between Manipur and Nagaland. We should know that Nagaland is north to Manipur or Manipur is south to Nagaland. So the correct answer for this question is option B, 2, 3, 4, 1. With this, we come to the end of today's The Hindu News Analysis. If you like the video, click the like button, comment, share and subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel for more updates and content on civil service exam preparation.